Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Story number one. Is it random bullcrap from stupid apes, or is it genius beyond our understanding? It is well known that almost all human battles are run with war mine AIs pinnacles of digital creation that can absorb all available data about its surroundings, from the visual readings of every camera within a thousand miles, to the sounds collected from a million microphones. Every public system and device that could give data was at its command. This was backed up by scanning equipment in a network of the most advanced military support units in the galaxy, and data insights shared with it by its linked Warmind brethren. It knew everything about the troops it was entrusted with, their strengths, their weaknesses, hopes and dreams, their missions and their retirement plans. Their one focus in their entire existence was to come up with a way for them to do that mission and to get them home in the safest, most efficient and most effective way possible. Because they were operating at levels exponentially higher than those any biological being could ever function at, because they were considering the millions of possible effects at every moment, every possible action unfolding before them, and because they understood those interactions on a level is almost one with the universe itself. Some of their orders were still a little... Meh, odd. The public knew of the weird orders that after the battle were revealed to be genius commands that turned the tide of battle by finding the only solution to impossible situations such as when a squad was ordered to start an immediate loud and enthusiastic sing-along of Sweet Carolina on a supposedly stealthy scouting mission. Just as the squad reached the loudest part of the chorus, the enemy attempted its teleport attack, promptly had its eardrums collectively shattered as was easily dispatched before the unarmed humans escaped. Having intercepted communication saying that squad's heat signatures had been picked up, and was being targeted by the Kalexi Teleport Shock Squad. The War Mind had realized that it wouldn't win a straight fight, and if the ship wasn't ready for hyperjump as soon as the troops were aboard it, it wouldn't make it a mile off the surface. The Kalexis had a vulnerability to certain sound frequencies at not an impossible to reach volume. Getting the troops to start singing Sweet Carolina at the correct time had led to the correct note at more than a suitable volume just at the perfect time. Or in one story that had accidentally leaked to much embarrassment, the 13% upswing in public approval for the armed forces was fortunate and totally unforeseen side effect, honest. An entire base of 200 male human troops, none of whom had left the base for three months, were told to look at as much porn as possible on as many devices as possible, and all filters and sight blockers were removed. No one knew why, until the cybersecurity unit showed up two hours later. About an hour after the order, the base's systems had been subjected to a cyber attack. The accumulated viruses and malware that had now infested the base's systems had damaged and slowed the enemy AI attacking them. This allowed the Warmind to focus on keeping the vital systems and databases secure, and uncorrupted until the cybersecurity unit could arrive and deal with the threat properly. When the enemy aircraft attempted a bombing run, and the automated air defenses were still up, the enemy's plan became even clearer. The public were never told about the ones that never made sense even after the battle. But the military people always knew. Everyone had at least one, but the fiercer and longer the fighting, the more likely the really weird orders were to come. The more the troops were just hanging on, the more bizarre orders happened more often. The troops always saw it as a kind of comforting in a weird way, that war was so fricked up, even specifically designed war mind AIs would throw stress and constant bloody battle. And as the orders had never backfired, no matter how weird, 
they were always swallowed, no matter what the circumstances. This almost human quirk of the war mind seeming to make the troops trust the AI more than if the orders were always perfect. Everyone who faced combat knew that some orders just didn't turn out to have some magical benefit. Sometimes, you just do something embarrassing for no reason other than to be laughed at by other units afterwards. Every barracks was full of stories. One story was of troopers told to spray themselves and their equipment with sunscreen for a nighttime patrols for three months. Or the unit that thought it hit the jackpot when it was told it would be eating kebabs made with actual food supplies, not rations, just for their forward base and no one else. Then they found out just how spicy they were. Most of the troops cried for the next four meals until the taste buds were so scorched that they could probably eat napalm and not notice the difference. Then they were ordered to just leave their own crap no further than 30 feet away from their base. It smelled as bad as it hurt. Just left it there, not buried, just out in the open for two weeks. They still got attacked four times. War Mine Combat Performance Analysis Logs War Mine Decision Analysis Number 08 Ampersand 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 Yen at Ampersand Ampersand Curly Brackets Squiggly Line AGHUN Order Units Unit List Redacted Wear and Cover Their Equipment with UV Blocking Sunscreen Analysis of enemy battle performance had suggested some connection to UV light and weapons fire accuracy at night. As their extra sensitivity to UV light was not a great deal better than humans, and not something that the enemy would depend on, it was not something that could be exploited in an offensive way at the time. But it did lead to a 4% reduction in accuracy of enemy fire, and a 3.5% reduction in casualties. Sunscreen had been oversupplied to the warmer regions of the planet as a failsafe against broken supply lines. But better than expected success in securing the area allowed the excess to be redeployed across all arenas on the planet. This would last the three months needed until the minor change could be made to new combat wear and be deployed. In the end, this led to a 4.5% reduction in casualties over the remaining eight months of the campaign. I know we need to keep these logs just in case the meat People think that we're taking the piss, but surely they trust us enough to not have to log every single decision? And log. War Mine Decision Analysis Number ANH796 Quote Amphitsan Star Hash GH97 And Star Euro Star Star J878 Quotation Underscore 66CJJ Make Unit Redacted Consume Custom Designed Food Plan for a period of two weeks. Make unit redacted, leave fecal waste within 30 feet of their own base. The enemy had deployed a bioweapon, very subtle and almost natural in appearance. This made it weaker than most bioweapons, an unavoidable side effect of the need to avoid detection and recrimination. It was impossible to filter using any available equipment, but it was neutralized by the ingredients that were available to the officer's food stalls. Once it had been digested and expelled, its effects on humans were neutralized, but what remained was now a mild airborne toxin for enemy forces. Over the two-week period it took for the new rations to be created with the necessary counter-agents, this war mind has made the following analysis and orders effectiveness. Estimated one friendly casualty avoided from poisoning, four more cases of reduced combat functionality avoided. Estimated one enemy casualty and 16 cases of reduced enemy combat functionality. Okay, now I can completely stand by this decision based on what resources were available at the time. But even I understand why I need to make this particular log. End log. Database entry note, at least 1,378 attempts to illegally obtain this file have been detected since the incident three weeks ago. End of story. Story number two. Heavy combat written by Rosie013. Jason checked his weapon loadout and followed the other troopers out of the transport into Hull. He was expecting the upcoming combat to be fierce. The briefing had been short and to the point. There wasn't anything to say that he didn't already know. The foe were cornered and desperate. It had only been hours but humanity was already so close to victory. 
A record time for the history books, he thought to himself with satisfaction. If he could win this last battle, of course. The foe were not a single foe, but a coalition of species working together. They shared common technology and even culture of sorts. And each species contributed one or more specialties to the combined fighting strength. But they did have one thing in common. They were all very alien. The sheer amount of firepower the last bastion put out was immense, dazzling human observers with lasers and other exotic visual displays of might. Jason's team, being humanity's elite, had pride of place leading the charge into the breach. The captain gave the signal, and in a shower of debris, a door opened up where previously there had only been a wall. The first trooper was in before the dust had settled, and paid for it with his life. Another yelled a warning and threw a grenade. Jason's turn came, and he followed the sound of the explosive detonation in, and slid to cover in the nearest hallway junction, right where he knew it would be. The facility originally had been humanities, and the general layout of the structure was available in the bottom right of his tactical awareness display. By the end of the tour, it would be humanities again. The confines of the building had made fighting chaotic, and the team had unfortunately become split up and separated during one of the many counterattacks. Alone, Jason took a moment to take stock of his situation before pushing on his final objective. The good news was he still had his health, having evaded the worst foe that could throw at him, his armor stopping some straight, unavoidable shots. His medkit had still yet to be used. The bad news was his ammo was nearly depleted for his battle rifle, the last of his explosives used a few rooms ago. Reloading, he had a clump and a half left, then he was down to his sidearm. No one have to do. Jason didn't even consider picking up one of the alien guns from amongst the corpse's strewn hallway. That was an amateur mistake that he would not fall into. Sweat beaded down his brow, but he could stand the pressure of the challenge. The enemy commander awaited. Focus. Jason had emptied his rifle as soon as the alien foe stopped monologuing, but all he had achieved was killing its bodyguards. Duck back into cover, switch to sidearm, target known enemy weak points. Focus. Incoming fire. Move! Fresh cover, a blind medkit, stims. Focus. The job was almost done. Then out of nowhere, a foe landed a devastating volley of shots, throwing his corpse across the room with enough force to make it ragdoll in the most undignified manner possible. There was a collective gasp from the crowd. Jason dropped the controller and clasped the sweaty forehead in his hands, devastated. There would be no speedrun record for him today. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one. And until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.